Hi guys, Daniel again. Today we're doing a routine castrate in a large dog. I'm going to show you how I do a closed castration. Very straightforward. I'm going to use Vicryl 3 naught to close up. And for my ligatures, I'm going to use some cat gut. So ideally, we grab one of the testicles. This is the right one. You want to push it as far as you can. You're going to try and make a midline incision. And you don't want it to be too large. If you go too far and you extend onto the scrotum, you often get a very bad reaction to the skin. And in some cases I've had uh, referrals where I've actually had to do a scrotal ablation where there's been herniations and other issues related to the scrotum. So just avoid that area. It's very old school to go into the scrotal region for castrating dogs. It's not necessary. And you can see here I'm just doing some blunt dissection once I start opening up. You can see the capsule of the testicle itself. I try not to make the incisions too small. I try and squeeze the testicle itself. Just gentle pressure. Just put the scissors down and show you how I do it. I'm going to push, push, push. It'll come out slowly. And just like that, that's his right testicle out. And then I usually use a gauze a swab just to break down some of the ligament here, avoiding any major blood vessels, which you can see inside here. I want to just remove as much of that tissue as possible. Just like that. Until you've got a nice vision of major blood vessels and then we're just going to do ideal one clamp technique just like that we're going to grab some cat gut and i routinely do two ligatures for these as there's a high movement area and there's a higher risk that there can be a breakdown of one of the ligatures if the dog's reactive which is the case i don't tend to do the tires too too strong. I normally do about five to six throws on my hand ligatures as so. But you can use Vicryl or PDS. You can do them surgeons and not, it's not a problem. But these are very routine. You shouldn't have any issues doing this. So that's one ligature done. And what I tend to do in these cases is I unclamp, I go a little bit higher up. And that's where my second, second ligature is going to be. Just above the previous, the previous one. I find it helps hold in the ligature really well. If you do go a little bit closer to the scrotum, there's a lot of inflammation. My advice would be to do an NSAID for a week, so Metacam, Rumor Cam, something similar to that. And probably worth doing some sort of steroid cream like Isoderm on the area. And it can take quite a while for the inflammation to go down, but probably the most common complication, especially when I watch new grads do surgery. It's not a problem. But I did have one a few months ago that came to me where a new grad had done it and it was the size of a watermelon, so you just got to be careful. And I'm going to watch, there's no excessive bleeding, place it back in there, just like so. And then we're just going to move on to the next one. So this will be his left testicle. I'm going to push it into the same region, size over the top very gently. If you go too hard, you're going to make it a open castrate, which is not a problem. There's really no real evidence between doing an open or ca closed castrate. I've not had any issues doing one or the other. In some cases, I've done one testicle open, one closed, and again, not had any problems, and I've done a lot. It's just preference as to what you prefer to do. Blunt dissection. Don't really want to use a scalpel blade in this area if you can avoid it. 
So again, you're going to squeeze just like that. It's going to pop out. Same thing again. We're going to grab the, the fatty ligaments. I'm going to gently pull it away, just like so, avoiding any major blood vessels. Get a good visualization, no excessive bleeding. And again, we're just going to clamp. I tend to do it down here. These are very nice surgeries to do. And the main reason for doing this is reducing testicular cancers. It can help with a lot of skin disorders, behavioral traits. And in large breed dogs, I normally suggest between the ages of one and a half and two, if the owners are concerned about any sort of castrations affecting behavior too early on or growth in the dog. Or if they have a female dog at home trying to prevent mating. I do advise this over the six, month, six monthly injections to sterilize male, male dogs. It's becoming a bit more common now. But you don't reduce the risk of testicular cancers in those cases. So again, unclamp, I go a little bit higher up, just like so. Just place my ligature in that area. I don't find there's much benefit to using two or three clamps in such a minor surgery like this. It just makes the area a bit more messy, more things that can get tangled and go wrong. As long as you've got full control, it should be fine. Less tissue trauma as well. Yeah, it's fine. Breathing is nice and stable, what we like. Again, I want to monitor for any bleeding, should be absolutely fine. Put it back in place, just a bit of fat hanging out. And then I'm going to use three knot vicryl to close. I try to use the smallest suturing material as I can. I find there's less tissue reaction. And you want to close all the layers up, just like so. I'm going to do a simple continuous suture technique. Be able to check if the spay has been jabbed, please. Thank you. I'm just doing the beginning of my simple continuous. I'm going to follow it all the way down. A tiny bit of bleeding in the area is normal, but you can see I'm nowhere near the scrotum. What we want to do is grab all the layers, just like this. And in some dogs, there will be a bit of extra bleeding because they are very sensitive to the surgery in any part of this region. The bleeding is going to help with the healing process anyway. Don't be worried about that. We're going to give anti-inflammatories after the surgery. And we're just going to follow it. Not too much pressure on these sutures, just enough to keep the wound closed. I tend to find holding with rat tooth forceps is much easier. Just like that. So this is the end of this layer here. I'm going to follow through with an Aberdeen knot. Actually, we'll do this instead. Okay, now we're going to do our intradermal sutures, which I find work really well in these small, okay. small surgery. Great, thank you. So, let's do our 
demo. Usually send home with a buster collar. Give an injection of uh, broad spectrum antibiotic, which should already be done. And that's that. These surgeries are very simple and straightforward. But I do tend to find the larger breed dogs do bleed a little bit more in this region, probably because of larger blood vessels. Especially when they have high blood pressure as well, which a lot of these breeds have. And nothing to worry about. Surgical side looks good. You know there was no bleeding on the inside of the incision. And the tissue will clot very quickly. Just finishing up our knot. Just like this. One more, and we're going to do our Aberdeen knot. Now have this dog come in between two and five days for a recheck. Check everything looks good. No swelling or signs of infection, which uh, I would say is very rare in this, this surgery. But the biggest thing is monitoring for swelling. Okay, herniation is probably the third most common issue that I see in this if the uh, layers aren't closed properly. And you will have to go back in and close them again. Sit down. Lots pulled through, and then always like to take this off, check the area. And again, you always want to be very far from the scrotal area. Okay, hope that helps.